Hey Todd. Yes, sir. How many other companies are actually all made in the United States? Like attachment companies, do you know of? There's quite a few, but I mean, there's a. We're starting to see more and more people coming from China. Guys, meet Todd. He's the president of Quick Attach, which is an attachment company that builds everything 100% in the United States. Yeah. A lot of Chinese products. Yeah. And they're certainly not the quality. No, the, not First at all. of all, the, there's a big difference in steel, the molecular makeup of steel, mm -hmm. number one, the thickness of steel. Yep. And we're starting to see more and more of that into the marketplace. It's about quarter inch thick, two inches wide, and this is made out of an A36, so it's the yield strength is 36,000. There we go. PSI. Okay. And this is a T1 material, so it's about 100,000. So I'm just going to demonstrate the difference in the strength. So wait a minute. What are we looking at? I guess I'm not following. Just it's, so the, the it's there. It's both steel, alloy steel. But it's just made out of different material, different alloy. And so they're stronger. Okay. So we make our grapple teeth out of this stronger, stronger material. Guys, meet Shane. He's the engineer for Quick Attach that's been building these attachments for 19 years. And in about one minute, he's going to do something that looks like it's gonna hurt really bad. Some cheaper manufacturers use steel that- Do you know that for a fact or are you just guessing? They advertise, or they should tell you what it's made out of, put it that way. So- Some make it out of high strength material. We're not, I'm not saying all of them don't, but oh. you have to be careful when you buy a grapple that you ask the question because they won't tell you that unless you ask. What is the question they need to ask? What material are your teeth made out of? What do, what's the answer you want? Well, you need to understand the, the stronger the material is better, obviously. So T1 or grade 100 steel okay. is very strong, 100,000 PSI yield strength. Okay. If it's A36 material, it's only 36,000 yield strength. Yield strength is the point where material goes beyond elastic and then permanently stays deformed. PSI. So that's three times stronger than that, although they look identical. Correct. Got it. And you have a demonstration well, of that? Just, you can stand on this, bend it. You know, it'll spring back, but if I really push on it with my weight, I can get it to yield. You yielded it. Yep. I knew that. I'm very proud of myself, Todd. Now the T1, I don't know if... Can't quite... Ouch. That would have hurt. I bet you felt that all the way up yeah, into your spine. It did yield a little bit. But you can see the difference in the loading. I mean, I hit one a lot harder than the other. Yeah, you definitely did. There's no, there's no comparison. You can design and engineer products to a price or to a performance and quality standard. And that's what we do with our products. Most of the quality companies design products to performance and quality standards. And we're happy to talk to anybody about who they are, but we'll also tell you who you should watch out for and be careful for in the marketplace. Okay. Well, let's take start taking a look at these grapples because the point today is to look at these grapples and to start to understand the key fundamental differences between them. I mean, uh, right? there are, there are, there's a world of difference between quality pieces of equipment. And don't get me wrong, there's good manufacturers. There's a handful of us in the industry that really set industry standards. But then there's a whole bunch of companies out there, so-called companies that claim to sell factory direct, but they're really not factory direct. They're kind of equipment jockeys. Factory direct is supposed to mean that the company that manufactures the item is directly selling it to the consumer. But what's actually happening out there is a lot of companies are importing different parts from China and other countries, mishmashing them together and then selling them as American built. That's technically right, but the components aren't actually made in America. They're just assembled in America. It's kind of a big difference. I don't, I don't think Todd, the president of Quick Attack, likes Chinese equipment. Maybe I'm just wrong on that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a safe you think so? All right, you guys. We're with Shane, the engineer. You guys were just meeting Todd. He's the president. Yeah. We're going to be talking about rakes. What do we call these things? We call these grapples or what's the, what's the oh, technically Oh, there's all kinds rake? of different terms that they use out in the industry, I guess. We, we say grapple rake for the kind that have vertical 
tines cut from plate steel. Okay. And then these type of buckets here, uh, people call them skeleton buckets or rod buckets or grapple buckets. Um, you can buy them with and without the grapples. But uh, the two examples we brought here are used for sifting material, like you can pick rocks out of dirt, for instance. Okay. But you can also use them for picking up logs and rocks and big rocks, rocks, boulders, and things like that. So And debris. Yep. Okay. Yep. Multi-purpose. So what I really want to talk about is the differences in the design. So when a guy's out going to buy one, he can really start to go, oh, hey, I need the one with the blah, blah, blah tines. Yeah. Because I don't know what blah, blah, blah tines actually mean. So... <laughs> um, what are we looking at? So we got four, boom, 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 boom. Yep. You guys make a lot more than four though, don't you? Yeah, I, I don't know how many right offhand. I didn't and know. you make them for tractors as well. Yep. Right? Yep. We make adapters actually, so we can put them on many different types of attachments or different uh, machines. Right. Anything from tractors, skid steers, mini loaders, um, some wheel loaders, things like that. Well, they, these are all set up with the universal attachment system, but what we really want to focus on is what are we looking at in the differences, the key fundamental differences in all yeah, these so pieces of equipment? With the examples we brought today, there's two main types. Uh, the one type that we have on the left here is, we'll call them rod buckets or skeleton buckets. And uh, they're used for sifting. Okay. And on the other end, we got um, grapples that are used for clawing. So, uh, so the, these raking. two are the sifting ones? Yep. Okay. And I can immediately see that the bottom plate, is that what we're going to call this yep. thing? Of yep. The bottom plate is definitely enough to, to, to pick up and carry debris as well, right? Right, yep. So the, uh, the main difference between this and a skeleton bucket is we're using rods here. And the spacing is a little bit wider. So we have a, a spacing here of about three and a quarter inches. And I think these are seven eighths inch rods. But the nice thing about the rods is they're not very deep. So they allow material of different sizes to slip through easier. Um, so because of their rounded edges. Okay, so what would a guy, what's a typical application for this one? A lot of people use them for uh, demolition and also, uh, you know, where you're going to want to sift chunks of concrete out of fill or dirt. Because it's got a bigger spacing? Yep. Okay. And they both work. I mean, it really depends on what kind of material you want to sift out, if it's smaller or larger. Right. So this is going to sift out more larger material. This is a little bit finer. I see we've got also one of the things that I want to point out is two hydraulic cylinders with two separate grapples. Yep. That's not on every, I mean, maybe it's, is it on every one of yours or is it? Cause no. I know industry wide, I've seen them with single cylinders and right. whatever. Yeah. So the nice thing about the independent grapples, uh, they're working in parallel, but you can clamp on uh, uneven material. So like if you have a stump where it's bigger on one side than the other, you can still grab it and it will self-adjust. Yeah, and we use cylinders that are that have really heavy uh, rods in them so they don't buckle. And we typically use three inch cylinders on all of our grapples so you get lots of clamping force. Okay. Um, some other cheaper brands, they'll, they'll use smaller cylinders uh, that are less expensive, but they also don't have as much force when they clamp. So. Right. Uh, let, well, let's look at the next one so we can start to get the, uh, the general understanding. And then if we want to look at any specifics, we can, because I see you've got a few examples set out for us here. Yep. But now as we look at the tines on this one, do we call these tines? I mean, when I was yeah. growing up on the farm, we called these tines. Yep. Is that Sure. Okay. Yep. And they're, they're laser cut plate. So these plates are uh, made out of a grade 80 material. It has a yield strength of 80,000 PSI. And you can see the spacing here is a little bit tighter. It's a little bit about two and a half. Okay. And then it's well supported by a, a cutting edge and a support bar through the middle. And is this just a heavier duty version of that? Is, I mean, cause it looks um, heavier duty, is it? Yeah, that's a relative term. I don't know really how you compare the two, but um, the cutting edge is heavier on that one because the cutting edges has to do more of the work. But okay. I, I, I couldn't really tell you if this one's heavier duty. But yeah, it does look heavier because of the, the thickness of the tines, the, the depth yeah, of them. It does. Well, why did you make, I mean, you're the engineer. Why did you do that? Well, each of these tines and on edge can help support the load. So especially if you're, you're lifting things or pushing on things out at the cutting edge here, each of these tines is loaded more so than the rod because the rod has a small cross section. Yep. And we're over on this side, it's more of the end place that are doing the loading uh, or the, the holding. So okay. uh, you could say that this is better supported maybe in the middle compared would, to that one. Would this be more of a sifting bucket? 
Right. Yeah, it, that one does sift better, I think, uh, with, with things less things getting stuck in them, just right. because of the rod shape. Yeah, because that rod shape is going to let everything kind of flow yep. over the top and around it, where this is going to grab onto yeah. it, and it's with the narrower spacing. Right. But this is still a fine sifting bucket for smaller rocks, so I could yep. maybe see where if you're going in and you just need to grade out a yard or something like that, yep. because you really can do that with these buckets, too. Yep. I mean, there's a lot of different applications you can do with these Yeah, the things. cutting edge uh, acts just like a regular bucket, so if you want to cut and grade, you sure can. Stop. One of the biggest things is the rod diameter size. Yep. Because a lot of people talk about three inch cylinders. They have three inch cylinders, but they don't have them. Small rods. Cylinder protectors. The biggest thing that we've got is the, is the grapple stop. Yep. That's huge. So it doesn't overextend and then the greasable pins, mm -hmm. the wear pins. So let's talk about those too. Sure. Okay, we just did. All right, thanks Todd. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's go. I mean, the, the point is, is those are, those are good things to differentiate from, although other people may be, may be marketing that they've got that, I want these guys to feel comfortable and aware and know in the knowledge that that's, that's a different, something that they need to look at. Well, the biggest thing there, the cell, I mean, it's a simple thing that grapple stops. Yep. What most companies do, what they don't do is they don't think about it. We've been doing this since manufacturing attachments since 1948. So what does the grapple stop do? It prevents that uh, grapple top from overcoming itself and overextending that cylinder. And what a lot of companies do, and we, we used to do this too, when we were new in business, I mean, we didn't know much about manufacturing grapple top. We'd overextend the cylinder and you, and you end up bending the cylinder. This, Todd, can you come here for a second? Is this where guys overextend their cylinder? Is this, right? this is one area where you can overextend your cylinder. Okay. And, I mean, a lot of these things really are meant for raking in this application. So this is where those stops come into play, isn't it? Okay. Are the stops on this unit? Where's the cylinder stop? See it bangs, it bangs up against here. Oh, because otherwise, if it didn't, it would go all the way in. Exactly. And then when it goes all the way in, then you overextend that cylinder rod and you end up bending the cylinder rod. Or you end up cracking. What'll happen is most grapples will crack, start cracking these welds out down here. Okay. Now let's look at how the short timed bucket rakes in comparison to the long timed one. Is it me or does this just seem like it rakes better? It rakes better, there's no question. This one was designed specifically for wood material. It's especially prevalent with the with the claw like this because they're made to be extended outward and then rake. And okay. you put the full weight of the skid steer on the on the grapple, the top part. So all that weight's going through the cylinders. Okay. And we don't want the cylinder to act as the stop. We use the stops. So here's the biggest physical thing. Physical stops. Oh. Here's the biggest thing with that stamp. Oh, okay. Cheaper grapples don't have that. Okay. Uh, okay. So they don't have that, but they also because they're built and designed for price, you know, so you get a cheaper price, but the thing in, in the long run because of we've got it designed in our product, we're actually cheaper because you're not having to replace cylinders. Because you will. You will well, there, replace I cylinder. guarantee you, it, you will replace cylinders when you overextend it. You will. I mean, it's going to happen. And what's going to happen is you may be start out as an owner operator and you're like, oh, I'm going to save a couple thousand dollars or whatever the price difference is. And I'm just going to be super careful. Thanks for telling me, Todd, that I'm going to overextend it. But I'm not going to because I'm so awesome. But then one day, some other guy is going to jump in it. Well, unless the owner of the business is running the product. That's what I which just said. Does, yeah, which doesn't happen in most cases. Well, eventually somebody else will run that thing, whatever. Okay, so what's the difference with this one? Because it's got such a short 
a short grapple yep. array in the bottom. So this is used more for like picking slash, rocks, logs, and you can use it almost like a bulldozer blade. So when the grapple's open, yeah. this is pushing more like a blade that has teeth and they penetrate the ground and they can kind of comb out the material. Okay. And then it bunches it all up and then you just put the top down and clamp it together. So Whoops. this is a solid piece that's uh, has two cylinders, one at each end. Okay, so let's look at this key difference Guys, I want you to see what Shane is actually talking about. This has got, it's got, still got two cylinders activating it, but now it won't act independently. Right. This is all tied together by this bar going across the top where these will float separately, but we also have longer, t longer times on the bottom of this one so that we can capture more material, sift more, where this one is more like a bulldozer blade that will clamp shut. Yep, it's made you... for bunching material and combing the material, raking it. What's the application? Well, like where, where we're standing here, you might use it to go clean up this slash. After you got done mowing or mulching, okay. you can use it to bunch everything together and put it in a burn pile, for instance. Okay, question for you on this one over here. We've got one more to yep. look at. How does this one, Because th so this one here has a similar design to this one. What's the key differences? Well, the, the key difference is that it's heavier uh, plate material. So this is using uh, a half inch grade 100 steel and grade 100 just means it has a yield strength of 100,000 PSI. Uh, this is using three quarter inch thick plate. And each of these teeth then the spacing's a little bit wider, but they're a little bit longer. And then we also incorporate the replaceable bucket tooth on the end. So you can replace those teeth as they wear out. So it's more of a, you get more penetration. Um, and there's a there's a larger volume here that you can grab with it, but it's made for a little larger bulkier material machines. Yeah. What's now? You have some examples over here of some. Yeah. So. What are we looking at? What are what are you attempting to demonstrate with? Uh, well, I wanted to show that the most important part of the structure grapples are fairly simple. I mean, they're just a bunch of steel and a couple cylinders. But the most important part of this structurally is the backbone. And we build our backbone out of a six by six inch tube, quarter inch wall thickness. Uh, it's grade 50 material. And some of the competition, they, they will use four inch tube. And that's, that's the size comparison. So that's the, di and it will, is it the same? I mean, let's be very clear is, are they trying to say that this but the, the unit they build with this four inch will go head to head in the same application as the stuff that you're using your six inch material i don't know what they claim to do okay. but all i know is that this is stronger than this and that's our show for today and i want to give a big thanks to both shane and todd from quick attach for taking the time to explaining all of the differences between grapples and rakes and quick claws and trying to help us understand which one you need for which application plus explaining the differences in quality because I would have probably been one of those guys that went out, thought he was saving 500 bucks and ended up buying a cheap Chinese piece of junk that was gonna bite me in the butt later on down the road. So if you guys want your own grapple tool rake or other attachment for a piece of equipment, go check them out at quickattach.com or I'm gonna put their phone number right up here. God bless you guys, go get them. And while I got you guys here, hey, do me a favor and check out these other two videos right here. Hit the subscribe button and also there's a bell. Hit that and that will notify you every time I upload a new video. God bless, go get them you guys. And that's the keeper.